Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Here we go with part two of the incredible Andrew Backen of ACM Talent. Let's do it. So Andrew, why don't you give us a little bit into that how yes. to audition properly for in different areas, like okay. you know, narration, promo, whatever. Yeah, well, the, the two things that specifically come to mind that I, I remember being in the booth that really was always a constant, not necessarily a battle with the client, but always constantly um, to be aware of, uh, specifically, and I think it was Andrea Romano that taught me this at SBV, is when you're auditioning for animation, um, usually, even though you're given you know, one or two pages of, mm -hmm. of sides to audition, mm -hmm. yeah. usually there's different emotions in there. Yeah. And that's really important for the actor to realize that, that it's not just reading it one way one through. Right. You want to make right. sure that you're showcasing what are the different levels of that character. And how you feel about who you're talking to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that, exactly, who you're talking to, the dialogue mm -hmm. there, um, and really letting go. And I think making a choice is the most important thing, and I'm just gonna sp specifically talk about animation, which is so not what I'm doing now, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. obviously I kind of missed that cred, man. part you of that. You got the cred, man, you got the cred. You got the cred, brother. Yeah. You, can talk, that, you can talk about freaking pancakes <laughs> if we're gonna listen, all right? I already talked about vacuums. You can do I'm fashion, you. you can do accessorizing I mean, tips. So far we're talking animation, no. vacuums, oh demos. I like the accessory choice, he went all on one hand, sometimes I do that, I leave one hand bare, See? I always do. I got I the two bare hands. Are you left-handed? No, right-handed, Interesting. Okay, so, I digress. Back all right. to you. Um, but making it, I think making a choice and really going with it. It mm -hmm. was easier for me as a booth director to be able to pull somebody back from making a bad choice yeah. right. than to have this nebulous, like, I'm not too sure where I want to go with this, yeah. mm -hmm. and not being able to direct it. And I think that works on any level. But in, in the animation kind of thing, you know, when the sides are coming out, a lot of times, you know, it's easy to want to read it straight through because yeah. it's like, okay, here is female warrior, and I'm just gonna kinda go with female warrior one for some reason. Um, here she is in battle, here she is walking through the forest, here she is talking to her partner. Well, creating scenarios, like if she's in battle, she's fighting with the sword. Yeah. If she's talking to her, you know, the, her warrior friend, like let it be an argument, let it be something where we can see a different level of, of exactly. emotion. Mm -hmm. um, so finding three, three beats to kind of break that up. Yeah. Um, you know, narration, you know, whether it's an in-show narration or wh whatever it might be, usually there's a show open and then there's an in-show read. Yeah. And the show open is traditionally gonna be a lot bigger. You know, yeah. it's like today, you know, it's you listen to, you know, um, Amazing Race. Right. Yeah. You know, you've right. got that show open that's like, here we go, seven teams and it's down there. Yeah. Or is it 12 teams, whatever. Yeah. It's been a yeah. while since yeah. I've watched the show. Only one of them will Only yeah. one survive. Exactly. Exactly. You know. So, yeah. you know, so you've got that bigger show open and then you've got the in-show that is a little bit more, okay, well now this is what they're doing and they're going yeah. to Madagascar and they're climbing this mm -hmm. tree. So um, I think those are two things to keep in mind that, that you know, from listening to auditions, that was something that I was constantly adjusting my clients on. Because it they needs always, to be a little bit in bigger. the copy, when they send it to you, they clearly have, you can tell what's the informational section, what's the opening, so they want in that audition to hear yeah. you hit those levels. Yeah, and, but a lot of times they don't get that in the copy. A lot of mm -hmm. times it's just, here's two paragraphs, mm -hmm. yeah. and you have to be able to read that, yeah. you need to be able to figure out what, what's going on here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think again, which gets back to making that choice, is if you make the choice that you're gonna make that one read bigger, it's easier to say, wait, that wasn't the open, that needs to be Exactly. You know, pull right. back again. Exactly. I think it's easier to pull back from from something than to kind sure. of pump it up. So, sure. um, and uh, and what about like in promo, like or or a, or a trailer? Because obviously you have maybe something that's horror based, mm -hmm. something that's sci-fi, something that's a little bit more uh, comedy, romantic comedy, mm -hmm. right? So, w w like, how do you when you look at something like that? If you were going to direct somebody on a trailer, and it was for any one of those situations, mm -hmm. what would be a key thing that you would really need to focus on in order to deliver an appropriate read? Um, that's a, uh, these questions are great. Um, what I think trailers in general, um, the, the narrator in a trailer is kind of, I, I always feel like it's somebody sitting next to you going, did you see that? Did you see that? Do you see what's going on? Mm -hmm. So it's not big like a promo. I mean, a promos tend to be right. bigger, yeah. you know, like tune in tonight, yeah. you know, again, getting back to you know, yeah, the Amazing yeah. Race, it's yeah. like, this is what's going on, you've gotta watch the show. Mm -hmm. The trailer tends to be this kind of nudge, like, did you see this? Like, let me tell you what's going on, and here's this world, and you see that guy, he's got four hours to save his family, kind of thing. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it tends to be a little bit more understated, mm -hmm. and almost like, like again, like I always think of somebody sitting next to me, or sitting behind me, kind of mm -hmm. whispering in my ear yeah. a little bit, yeah. kind of, don't look 
behind you, keep looking at the screen, but this is what's going on. Mm -hmm. And again, the promo That's side cool. of things tends to be, you know, again, bigger. It's got to cut through. Yeah. Um, generally speaking, it was something I touched on before, is that equal emphasis, that equal emphasis of the actors, you yeah. know, making sure when you're talking about, um, you know, the actors, the stars of the show, yeah. that you're nailing their names and putting them on an equal plane, mm -hmm. exactly. and also not losing the name of the show, which is of just course. as important, mm -hmm. and the name of the network, which right. is just as important. Just mm -hmm. So you have to have that consistent read all the way through, yeah. which is something that Harry talks about yeah. when he talks about working with his VO town. Yeah. You know, you had him on not too long ago. Yeah. And just being able to flip the switch and nailing it mm -hmm. is what any producer you know, that's what they dream of. They yeah. want to be able to know and have that reliability mm -hmm. that, you know, I need this guy, he's going to deliver exactly what I'm looking for. Exactly. Which, you know, again, gets back to that choice. Yeah. If they're making that choice, then it's, it's an effective choice. Absolutely. Is there anything that you notice voice actors doing that, um, that's detrimental to their career advancement? You don't have to question. mention who they are. No, <laughs> yeah. I, well, no we I will, prefer honestly, to not. I would never. I would never do that. We will not be. Chuck likes to try never. to date people. <laughs> <He's> like, never. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. You're not going to get. Chuck likes to get a little TMZ, <laughs> but don't take the bait, Andrew. No. You're too classy. I will not but, take the bait. But you must see. So, what are some things that you notice that, that people are doing that's kind of sabotaging, or it's detrimental to them getting to another level? Well, let's. Um, I'm going to say, if you're starting out, let's mm -hmm. just start there. Yeah. If you're starting out. Um, Let's look at the industry right now is digital. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you're handing out LPs, which yeah. is right on the cusp yeah. because it's kind of cool, but it's so not. Oh, you retro, man. You know, yeah. if you're handing those things out, if you you know you're passing those things out. Like I remember going to Promax my first year, geez, like a decade ago, and you, you're given a bag when you go to Promax, which mm -hmm. is the promo organization. Mm -hmm. You're given a bag by Warner Brothers, which is this cool bag, and you, it's filled with pens and pencils and notebooks and CDs. And a lot of people were just getting the bag and they liked the bag and they were dumping everything into the trash. So it's like they're not even paying attention to what's there. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of people there who were handing out CDs. And when you're not aware of what you know the environment is, if somebody picks up a CD, now they have to carry it around or now they're gonna throw it away. Or yeah. this stuff is, the, uh, the main reason why a lot of this stuff was thrown away wasn't that it was cool. I mean, I'm like a sucker. You give me a pen, I'll keep it. You give me, these, I'm going home with this mug, by the way. Yeah, so totally. I just, just so Don't that's, worry, we got that's you. Clear. We got you back, So, um, <laughs> I mean, you give me a freebie, I'm going to keep it. Yeah. yeah. But a lot of people are thinking, I don't have room in my suitcase, right, so I'm right. dumping yeah. this kind of stuff. So realizing, you know, how to get somebody to listen to your demo without bombarding them with something that they have to carry around. Exactly. Um, and constantly sending the same demo, constantly, um, you know, trying to get somebody's attention without a referral. I think a referral, whether it's from a manager or whether it's from a friend at an agency, yeah. gets your demo heard. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's how, again, that's how you and I met. Sure. You know, with, hey, take a listen to this demo. Yeah. It was much easier for me to listen to it because I trust you, I knew you, yeah. than for it to just randomly be submitted and not know who right. this person yeah. is. So, Andrew, have you had any, like, weird jobs before What survival you, jobs? Before you yeah. started doing survival your Survival jobs. Yeah, any Ouch. survival jobs you want to I will about? not talk. I've had some great jobs. I've driven an ice cream truck. <laughs> Yay! I've, Did you uh, eat serious? the proceeds? Uh -huh. I would have I've eaten worked the in, Oh, yeah, you eat a lot of ice cream. I've uh, worked at a video... A video store was, like, my first job. And still, mm -hmm. I mean, to this day, that's... It's really... It's one of the best jobs you could have. Working yeah. in a video store, well, yeah. recommending movies oh, to gosh, people. Yes. I mean, how, how ma amazing is that? Yeah. People yeah. come in, hey, what'd you, what'd you think of that? You know? You got the ginger beads and the hot tamales. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, now it's all blogging and stuff like that. Right. So, But, yeah, yeah, but right. back then, it was, like, the conversation of yeah, somebody yeah. coming in. Video store... So, Ice, ice cream, cream truck, truck driver. Racetrack. I worked at a race track. You worked horse, at a horse racetrack? Race, yeah, thoroughbred racetrack. Doing yeah. what? Beulah Park, Columbus, Ohio. I was a placing judge. I worked in the racing office, like, scheduling the races. That yeah. is awesome, yeah. man. Nice. That was fun. That was good so, times. Good times. So well the placing rounded. judge, you're up there at the binoculars, like, you know, calling the, the horses. Wow, that's... Like so you, like, one, two, yeah. and three, so... And yeah. That's a big responsibility. Exactly. Watch like, do, you, do you do that through the speaker, or did you have to, like, no, just write it down? No, um... If if you must know, basically you've got. <laughs> I, must know. I know. <laughs> so there's like. You must know. So there's, and I don't know how it is at other racetracks, but usually there's like three, at least three people looking following the race. Yeah. Right. So the numbers that you see on the board 
they're being verified with the person next to you. So you have a little bit of like, wait, I see two, three, no, it's three, four, I see. it's seven, yeah, eight. It can be you know, so, so you can close. follow that. Yeah. yeah well, no, that's just while the race is going on. Okay. Wow. So and then when it's a finish, if it's a photo finish, you've got a photographer right. upstairs who shoots it and then drops it down, and then we take a consensus, you know, a consensus like, okay, what is it? Is it on the nose? Is it yeah. a tie? You know. Um, to make that decision. Ooh, man, so, that's freaking tricky right there. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's wow. it's it's a profe- it's an operation. Um, hey, I got a question for you, dude. Another one. <laughs> it's yeah. like, wow. What, uh, These are just like never where, ending. Where, where do you see, and, and maybe think about this for a little bit. We'll put the clock on, on pause here for a second. <laughs> what, where do you see the business, uh, you know, trailers and promos specifically, <laughs> um, five years from now? Wow. Um, if you had to predict. Yeah. Like what you feel. You know, what you what's, what's interesting, I will say that when I listen to trailers, um, and let's just say most of the trailers for the kind of movies that I go to see, I mean, I'm just going to like action, horror, or something mm-hmm. like that. Very rarely am I hearing that narrator, mm-hmm. but I'm hearing that tag. You know, starts yep. Friday, yeah. rated R, or something like that. So if that trend continues, um, then obviously, you know, that, that narration is disappearing. So, but what's, what I feel like is replacing the narration is a lot of ADR. So they use the actors filling in those lines. Mm -hmm. So if there isn't that one word or that one line in the film that Liam Neeson saying, I have three days to save my family, Mm -hmm. you know, or something, or, or the villain saying, Mm -hmm. you have three days to show up with the money, that a lot of creative editors are writing those lines, voice matching the actor in the film and, you know, booking those people for the VO. And, and so that's one trend that I think. Um, goes in line with the smart, the smarter audiences. I, because mm-hmm. I, I personally feel that when I'm watching a film and somebody has to tell me what, what that movie's about. Excuse yeah, me. Okay. Um, hopefully you can cut that out. We won't. Um, yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that if somebody has to tell me what this movie's about, yeah. then I'm kind of out already. Yeah. So I, I want to be hooked on the trailer. I mean, I do love watching trailers. A yeah. good trailer. You know, you watch it over and over again. The new Star Wars trailer that just came oh out, it's like God. the yeah. music and the effects, Freaking and there's just very awesome. little there. And look, I mean, you know, we become kids again when yeah. we watch a good trailer because mm-hmm. we get excited exactly. about seeing that yeah. and yeah. building that mystique. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so I, I think I see, I see think that's one trend that's going on there. I do like interesting voices. I love to hear a female voice on a trailer. Um, you, I love you, to hear do something. Do you think we'll hear, hear some more females I, on trailers? I, I would love to. I absolutely would love to. I, I don't know. What I mean, about more females on more promos on more networks? Definitely. definitely. That, I, I'd say that's definitely going to be the case. Yeah. yeah. I, I, me too. I yeah. Let's bring that back. I love you? it. Let's, All right. let's bring it back. Cheers to that. Cheers. So. There there you go, cheers baby. to that. More women and promos Woo-hoo! and trailers. There yeah. we go, baby. <laughs> Sorry, guys, but you've been dominating for way too long. Yes. Um, that's cool, man. Yeah. And you know what? The funny thing is, is that I love that you have an insight. So the things that you're talking about, a lot of people aren't aware of, but you, you're seeing things on a day, day-to-day basis mm-hmm. that yeah. might back up yeah. some of the things that you've uh, just been talking about, which yeah. is really, really awesomely cool. Yeah. What, um, what are some of your biggest challenges um, as a manager? Hmm. Um. You know, I think maintaining relationships. I mean, I think mm-hmm. that's, that's, it's one of the biggest one, I think, just in life in general. Yeah. I mean, with social media, like right now, I mean, I've, I have an 11-year-old daughter and my family all over the world, let's say. So, you know, I upload photos on Facebook. I share it with my family. So yeah. that's mm-hmm. one way to stay connected. Mm-hmm. But that's just one thing. And I think in, you know, when you talk about the voiceover world or the entertainment industry in general, you know, if, if your friends, you work with a director a year ago on a project and he's working on a new project, how do you get in touch with that person? How do you stay in touch with that person? How do you stay in that person's radar so they remember you for that next film, that next promo, whatever it is? So that's, I think that's number one. The nice thing about that is there are events throughout the year, like Promax, like the Clio, the Key Art Awards that was right, just a few right. days ago, the Golden Trailer Awards. Um, you know, there's real screen, there's, there's award shows, there's events, there's conferences that allow you to connect and reconnect with those people. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, as we, ta- as you mentioned before, like I really like the face-to-face interaction, yeah, but I can't, I mean, I can do that three times a day, you know, five, let's say seven days a week, because I do take meetings on the weekend and at night and stuff like that you still can't see everybody. Right. So right. those events allow you to see everybody in one place, yeah. mm-hmm. kind of schmooze the room a little bit, work the room, you know, shake hands with them um, to kind of keep that ball rolling. But I would say number one, that's it, it's probably the most challenging thing is that relationship yeah. because everything I do is all about the relationship, you know, which it gets back to 
you know, I, I, the TMZ thing that you said, it's like, I, I don't, there's no point in talking down about anybody. There's no point yeah. in insulting anybody. Yeah. You know, True. if I'm not with somebody, whether it's a relationship or a client, there's a reason we're not together and I wish them well and hopefully they wish mm -hmm. me well. And yeah. that's, that's pretty much it. Well, and it. I learn every day, you, I mean, for me, I mean, LA is a small town mm -hmm. and you're only like one or two people away from, if you say something, there's maybe one or one or two degrees of separation that that's going to get back to. It's you true. know, it's just totally. you have to be it's so true. careful and, and classy. Well, I think careful. I think if you get in the mindset of that's the way you live your life, mm -hmm. then there's no you don't yeah. have to be careful. Yeah. It's really it's it's funny that it's we're getting very spiritual right now, but it's funny that it's easy to be negative but hard to be nice, and it shouldn't be that way. Mm -hmm. It should be the other. It way It should around. be the other way around. Yeah. Like yeah. it should be much easier to you know I'm going to help that person. I'm going to do the person a favor. Mm -hmm. You know, which is you know as as a business that's why, you know, if we we meet with somebody who isn't right for us, you know, we do try to kind of still encourage them and let them go on their yeah. on their way. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it is like, look, if somebody really isn't right for VO, who am I to tell them that they're not? You know, Definitely. just like you were sharing stories about other clients and stuff like that. It's yeah. like, you, you never know. I mean, you look at Michael Jordan's story and you look at, you know, whether they're sports heroes or celebrities, mm -hmm. that if they listened to one person who told them you shouldn't be doing this, they wouldn't have gone anywhere. Yeah, so yeah. sometimes that becomes the fire. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just that one person's opinion. Mm -hmm. So, um, boy, this is an interesting well, kind I of turn tell, here. No, I always great. tell everybody, don't you ever let anybody tell you who you can be, what you can be, and yeah. what you can be. It because yeah. it is not true. I mean, it's there, you know, it's Scott so Rubble about, was told timing. that he right. should give it up because he didn't have the voice for doing what yeah. he's doing today, right. making gazillions of dollars doing yeah. it. And he actually got the chance to meet that person who told him that mm -hmm. wow. years oh, that's, after Yeah, that's fact, right. Yeah. Right? And sometimes so, it's not your which, time, but it doesn't which I mean love. your time is never Yeah, so you learn, you learn never to do that because yeah. you just don't know these days. Yeah. Anybody yeah. possesses the, the, the inside them, they already are who they want to be, they just need to do. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it was something, Jody and I uh, had, had lunch uh, a couple weeks ago, Jody, so. Jody, Jody got Gottlieb, Jody yeah, 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 exactly. Jody got leave. So, Love. and you know, we were talking about how, you know, you're talking about the demo and how I'm very selective about the the clips that I send out because I want to yeah. make sure that it makes it easy for that that client to decide to make a decision. Mm -hmm. And I think that's whether it's the talent side of things or whether it's the production company or whatever it is, is it's understanding how best to serve them mm -hmm. to make their jobs easier. And yeah. which is really ultimately makes my job easier. Again, you know, whether it's the relationship side of things or whether it's, you know, the uh, effective networking, which is, you know, what are you looking for? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if I have it, but what are you looking for? And if I don't have it, where can I guide you or who can I call to help you out? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, again, getting back to being nice and kind of paying it. I don't even know if it's paying it forward. It's just, um, yeah, you know, like if, if somebody asks for help and I can make an introduction, I'll make that yeah, introduction. I think, kindness. yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> but I think the other, the side of it is finding a way to, is there a way to monetize that, you know, and which I don't think there's any shame in that. If somebody's asking me for advice or asking me for help or asking me to make a connection, um, you know, is there a way, I guess this is kind of like, you know, a vague question, but is there a way to protect yourself so that if you do introduce somebody to a, a wealthy investor or something like that. Well, is the, should you get a piece of that? Should you not get a piece of that? Mm -hmm. it, well, I mean, it's, it's a little bit of a dilemma yeah, because you want to be kind. If you're in between, the business yeah. of hooking people up, then you should. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And that's the bottom yeah. line. Yeah. You know, if you work yeah. at Seven Eleven and you don't have any <laughs> idea about, but you just know some dude and you don't even know that that's a part of business and you're probably not going to do that. But yeah. somebody in your position, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, you need to look at stuff yeah. like that. But I, I mean, think just that's... like with me, you know, uh, you know, I, I'll produce a demo for somebody, but if they want me to guide them mm -hmm. and help them, you know, with marketing and showing them exactly what they need to do and, yeah. and, and, and even, you know, referrals and things like that, and they want me to sit down and spend time mm -hmm. doing a marketing plan, they're going to have to pay for my time. Yeah, exactly. You know, because that's what I do. Yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. And that's the important thing is understanding. I think it goes both ways because by establishing that, whether it's core business or a part of your yeah. business, mm -hmm. once you once you establish whether it's a rate or whether it's a time or whether whatever it is, I mean, for me, if somebody you know wants advice from me and asks me for coffee, pay for the coffee. Like that's it, you know. And, and it's He's like cheap. it's I, I am pretty cheap. cheap, but it's like a simple thing. I'm like it's I just want a like, Starbucks card. <laughs> I'm 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 cheap. Yeah, exactly, right. Yeah. Um, but it's like you know, the, I, I look at that like if you're gonna ask somebody for exactly. help, yeah. that would be that's the Honor bare minimum. Time that's and, the gesture. Yeah. So I would exactly. say, like, if you ask somebody for lunch, 
you pick up the tab. That's yes. it. And I, I mean, for me, again, it doesn't matter. But yeah. I, I know a lot of people have been very, um, just, just it got a bad taste in their mouth because somebody has asked them for help, mm -hmm. and also like, okay, I'm going to go, and you need to pick up the, the tab. And it's like, yeah. you know, yeah, like no, nice. you need to, you manners. need to kind of follow through yeah. with that. Yeah. Yeah. So be um, classy. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Hello. Totally. So bringing classy back too. Yeah, we're bringing classy back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Andrew Atkins says classy is coming back. <laughs> Hashtag classy. Um, Hashtag. So, Andrew, what do you think have been the keys to your longevity and your success in this industry? Wow, that's a good question. Um, I, I know that, I mean, looking at the doors that have opened for me, like when I was at SBV, if, if I didn't have a friendship with one of the assistants, Kylie, who went to William Morris, mm -hmm. begged me to work at William Morris, I would have never gone over there, right. and I resisted it. So because of that friendship, because she felt I was a good fit, that opened that door there. Mm -hmm. um, at SBV, you know, again, I'm gonna look at that because that was my starting sure. point. Um, I built that relationship with all the actors and made sure that when I was in the booth with them, it was their time. I wasn't worried about, as much as I should have been, I wasn't worried about how many people were waiting in the lobby, right. how many people needed to get in. My time with them was with them. And I think, you know, going into William Morris and doing, you know, doing what I'm doing now, I always make sure that I make time for the person. It gets back to listening, that I'm listening to them, that if I'm gonna multitask, if I'm gonna have a lunch with somebody and I'm checking my email, I'm saying, dude, I'm really sorry, but I, I need to check my email while we're at lunch. Yeah. Right. I'm not doing it because I don't wanna be present with you, but I'm doing it because I have to work. Yeah. Sure. And at least acknowledging that. Um, so, and which again gets back to, you know, what. I don't know if I'm answering the question, but that I, I feel, I mean, I, I'm yeah. very much aware. Secrecy you're a good communicator. Are mm -hmm. You're a very good communicator. Being classy, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, listening. building relationships, mm -hmm. and listening. This is, this is obviously you're listening. How Thank the heck God. are you not going to be <laughs> successful <laughs> doing those four Let's, magical things? Let's recap. By the way, I got lucky remembering all that stuff I know, that right was, there. That was really good. I was going to say, that was rather extraordinary. Right? A little bit impressed with you right now. For, For a, a guy. guy. <laughs> For this guy, right? too, you know, the 80s. Anyway. Yeah, well, no. well, um, yeah. what are we talking about? <laughs> but I'm also, I'm very... I know where I came from. Mm -hmm. I mean, I talk about Cleveland. Like, I, I know where I came from. I'm very proud of those pasts. And it, it's not that I've been perfect. I mean, I've made a lot of mistakes, mm -hmm. you know, in, in my past. So I'm certainly not perfect. But I recognize the mistakes. And I recognize that if I made a mistake, I'm not going to repeat that mistake. Mm -hmm. That everything I do is about growth, which is, you know, gets back to the networking. Is, is I knew I made mistakes as an agent because I was selling and selling and selling and I was missing that relationship. Right, right. So now I focus on the relationship first, which is why we've created this company, so that yeah. we can keep developing those relationships, yeah. but yeah. also still servicing the needs of our clients and their relationships with their agents and protecting that. And and I, suddenly I hear music playing in the background as I'm saying, do, so do, I'm gonna just no. stop. <laughs> no, no, there's no music. There's no music. What does yeah. what ACM stand for? Alta Creative Management or Alpha Creative Management. Uh, when Mark and Phil started the company, the, the goal was that it was gonna be a company yeah. mm -hmm. that, and they were gonna brand a company as opposed to like an individual or something like yeah. that. We really right. try to kind of, you know, again, this is, right. uh, um, for, for whatever it's worth, not about a name, but just about a company okay, and kind cool. of grow it. And because it's a management, um, it does allow us to do a number of different things, whatever that might be, whatever the future might hold for us. Our core mm -hmm. business, obviously, is voiceover. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're obviously going to keep growing that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So you guys, you clearly have a really nice synergy between the three of you. What do you think... Why do you think you have such a good working relationship, or is it because they're on the East Coast and you're that's out exactly, here? That's exactly because I don't <laughs> see them. It's funny because I mean I talk to them, geez, three four times a day yeah. as, as much as which may not sound like a lot, but that's a lot. the, that's the a fact lot. that they're in New York, yeah. I mean, you know, in the agency side of things, you sometimes you you're not even talking to the people that are in your office, mm -hmm. and I mean I talk to them throughout constantly throughout the day, whether it's an idea or we're brainstorming about something or to say, hey, do you know this person or hey, I just saw this this thing online, you should give this person mm -hmm. a call, and it goes both ways. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's interesting because when I first met with them, um, you know, like three years ago, yeah. I just happened to be in New York, because uh, I, was, I was managing this performance artist, and I happened to be at New, in New York at the time, and kind of went in just to sit down and catch up, because they had started this company, and I was thrilled for them. I mean, I'd known Phil mm -hmm. for as long as I've known Mark, 
And, you know, again, Mark and I worked together at William Morris, him in New York, me in LA. Phil was a manager and an agent in New York, and we were trying to share clients together and stuff like that. So when they formed the company, it was really just, guys, I wish you well, let's get together and talk. Yeah. And I figured it was like a quick lunch meeting or something like that. We talked for like four and a half hours, like way into the night, yeah. like talking about things we can do and who we know and how to keep building the business. And mm -hmm. it just felt so easy. Yeah. And I think, I don't know if it's really answering your question, but I think the fact that we're all on the same page with things. Which, and it's not that we helps. agree yeah. with everything, yeah. but just Absolutely. that it's, and it's good that we don't agree on everything. Like we'll yeah. argue and we'll have little arguments about, well, I think it's, we should do this, or I don't think we should do that. But we're very um, opinionated, yeah. but we're also respectful to mm -hmm. each other's opinion. Yeah. Exactly. And it's almost like we have this natural synergy that majority rules. Yeah. If two of us don't feel we should do this, or if one of us is really strongly against an idea, then we don't do it because it's not worth yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I think so. a good collaboration is you don't try to all cover the same bases. No. You yeah. let everyone have permission to do what they do well, and then you pick up the slack if, if there's things to do, but. Yeah. Um, do they ever get jealous of you because we're working with superior talent here in LA? <laughs> oh, I love it. And because we have better <laughs> weather and they have to sit the, there in the, the snow. The weather, <laughs> yes. The weather. Gosh, we weather, are out yes, of time. Yeah. Well, we're a little out yeah. of time here. Um, I do uh, wanna, just kidding about that, guys. I, I do want to add, though, the interesting thing about about us working together is that if we have a client that we're passionate about, yeah. we all take them on. Like as a company, we're signing clients. We're not hip pocketing right. anybody. Yeah. Right. So which was easy as an agent, if there was a friend of mine who wanted to break into VO, I could bring him in, I can let him audition because I didn't worry about what the other agents felt. Mm -hmm. um, but as, as managers, we want to make sure that the clients that we're repping are getting all of our Everybody, opportunities yeah. and, yeah. and, you know, that we're completely behind this person. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I yeah. love it. All right. I love it. Andrew was just talking during a little break about, you know, the show, Viobo's Weekly, and do you actually watch the show? Yeah. You do? Of course. That's freaking awesome, man. Well, why is that you. a surprise? Like, why is that a surprise? Well, you're, well, you know, well because you're, you're a busy, busy guy and you're in the having industry lunch and it's and like, coffee. you know, why, what do you, what, 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 what do you like about, about Vio Buzz Week? Well, I mean, uh, to be honest, like, I like seeing people I know. I like mm. seeing friends of mine. I like seeing people I haven't seen in a long time. That's cool. You know, I can also be opportunistic if there's somebody I don't know who's a producer or something like that. I'm like, ah, oh, I can reach out. I know this person. I can reach out to this person. Loved you so, on the buzz. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, you know, which is again, you know, it's just yeah. being effective and integrated yeah. in this industry. But Absolutely. I mean, it's it's is you that, guys. You is guys, that maybe how you maybe got to get to know Jody Gottlieb a little bit? Well, jo the interesting thing is Jody's had a long-standing relationship with my colleague Eric Seastrand at mm -hmm. William Morris. Like yeah. they've known each other for a long time. And Jody and I were introduced, I think, when I first became an agent in two thousand four. So you've known of her for a well, while. Well, I've known of her, yeah. and I and I know that. And I, I said this to her as well when we got together. Is I th I feel like Eric had we, like the three of us had lunch, yeah. and I knew that that was Eric's friend, and I knew that that was his relationship. And at the time, I was like, okay, well, they're friends. That's their relationship. I'm going to go pursue other people and other relationships. Yeah. So I never really He's a cool guy. This guy. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it was may have been stupid because I could have gotten business <laughs> oh, from her. Oh, that's funny because I was just going to say you're really. Yeah, but, he's, a, he's a smart, well, no, stupid, because instead guy. of well, yeah, that's no, you know. but you have a good instinct. You do, you know, well, and I think that whether and, whether it was a good instinct because I feel like in in a lot of ways I left business on the table because mm -hmm. it was his relationship. Yeah. yeah. Um, circling back to now, I mean, just you know, here, I mean, so many people have, have worked with her and studied with her and yeah. coached with her. Yeah, it's like I love her. I it's like with her. She's yeah, she, she's wonderful, yeah. absolutely wonderful. So it was you know now as as you know we were talking about before is I want to have this personal relationship. Yeah. And even if it doesn't go anywhere, I still want to be able to have this time where exactly. they can get to know me and I can get to know yeah. her. But I yeah. do, so. I, I'm such a believer of the timing of things, you know. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, those seeds get planted and you just let them rest because if you're burying going, are they growing yet? Are we making progress? You just sometimes you have to just plant the seeds yeah. and let them lay there until they're ready to... Do yep. something. Yeah, and you're good at that. Yeah, you're a uh, farmer. Hey, you're like put, a farmer. Mm -hmm. He is a farmer. Let's put Andrew on <laughs> the hot it. seat and ask okay. him one last question. Oh yes, God. Andrew. He's like, I have oh to God. have a, a, a swig. He's over the... there going like, oh my God. What is in that magic mug? I've been talking look... and talking, talking, hoping we weren't even going to get to this part. Okay, give me a number mm. between five and 129. Oh my God. You can do it. You 129. Can do it. 129. <laughs> he wants the last page. 129 reasons why he doesn't uh. like his life right now. Okay. <laughs> oh God. Oh, Don't here you laugh go. before you read the question. <laughs> <That's a good laughs> These are all good questions. Okay. Man. I'll give you. I'll give you a choice. 
okay? Because I like you that much. Okay. If you could have the answer to any question, what would you ask? You ask right. Is everything really connected? I think. I think mm. I'd be curious about that. Wow. Because I feel like there's the philosophy, the idea that one little thing that you do, does it really have a ripple effect? Mm. And we I think and that. we postulate on that, that and we wonder, like, nice. but Deep. is it really connected? Solid. So. Deep. Solid. Wow. So. I love Get that. down. Andrew, Andrew Adkin. Adkin. Dude, I have to tell you something. Uh, <laughs> first of all, <laughs> As you guys don't know, but you do now, you don't do this type of stuff, okay? No. And I hate on camera stuff. He hates really on camera do. stuff. I really he, do. But here's the thing, and I know that, okay? But Jay, Stacey and I and all those people out there all over the world, we thank you, okay, yes. for taking the time, getting out of your comfort zone to come in and share with us and, and discuss some things that, that you have answers to. And uh, so we really, really appreciate that, man. I know how, how hard you're working and, and that you're out there doing stuff, so taking a little time for us is very, very yeah, appreciated. Yeah. Thank you. Such Absolutely. an incredible way to end the year. You guys have some more knowledge, inspiration to kick it in 2016. That's and right. Thank you for all you do. Thank for you. Being guys. Such Absolutely. A you guys, this is so much fun. Blessing like, really. to our thank industry. This is so much fun. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Guys. Absolutely. Andrew Ackley, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be back next week with some more VO Buzz for you. Hey, it's Andrew Atkin. I just got buzzed with Chuck and Stacy on VO Buzz Weekly. I had a blast, and I hope you guys learned a lot. Well, that concludes our two-part interview with the awesome Andrew Atkin. I have to say, I learned a ton. So did I. And in such an incredible way to end 2015. Absolutely. Chuck, thank you for another great year. <laughs> Stacy, you ruled my 2015. <laughs> and thank you guys for sticking around for yes. all three. We hope you're having a beautiful holiday season. Yes, thank you so much for watching. We'll be back in January of 2016 with season five. Woohoo! Yes. You don't want to miss it. And remember to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time, time for a little buzz. buzz.